Take two. Welcome to Natural 20 Proof, the show that exists because drinks are good, friends are better, and the dice gods own our souls. Hey. Mm -hmm. um, so, just a big shout out to, uh, we're, we're broadcasting live from the Mac Mead Hall up in the northern Willamette Valley in Oregon. So if you're in the area, we've got one of the widest selections of fermented honey beverages around. So if you might check us out. Um, I also want to give a big shout out to Sirenscape. We're using their beta online web player today, as always. Um, it is a great service, allows you to mix and match different sound files and samples. You can even upload your own. I still haven't figured that out just yet. I try <laughs> playing happy adventure music and enter the hag as badass, you know, uh, bagpipe metal music comes on. And I mean, no one's really sad about that, but also it doesn't really fit the vibe all the time. Mm -hmm. We clearly have uh, enough haggises. We <laughs> <laughs> must, we must enter more Haggai. Um, um, is that the slurl? <laughs> Haggai? Haggai? Haggus? Haggis. Um, Haggis. Yes, I think so. Haggis. Yes, anyway. Haggis. It will be the Haggis. Isn't that the wing of our song? Anyway. It's one of the Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, alright. <laughs> consider me derailed. Well. Consider me derailed. Okay. Uh, yeah, check out Sirenscape. They're awesome. Have some super great uh, services out there. You can pretty well set up a sound set to fit any vibe you're looking for. Um, as always, make sure you're wearing your masks out there. We are always wearing our masks because we're not together here in this room. Um, we all mostly vaccinated and uh, are in pretty social distance pods. So anytime that we are not actively at this table, drinks in hand, then we are masked up. It is really important. We all want to be on the other side of this nonsense. So do your due diligence. Oh, and by the way, get vaccinated. This isn't a political issue. This is a common sense issue. Go get it because some people can't and they're depending on you to actually do your responsibility. So, yeah, this is super, super important, guys. So, uh, go get that done. Um, and then uh, make sure if you're uh, watching us on Twitch to subscribe to us on Twitch, follow us on Twitch. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube later on, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe there too if you can. Uh, if you miss anything and you want to throw on our, uh, our adventures when you're on your commute or whatever, we also have got our adventures up on Spotify as well as mostly every uh, podcast player service you could be looking for. So uh, make sure to go check that out as well. Um, also, they can join us on Discord, Twitter, or Facebook. We have groups in all three. We have yep. places in all three of them. So. Discord, Twitter, and Facebook uh, all will be giving a, a live updates on any kind of you know new stuff we'll be doing, any time changes to our schedule or whatnot. We just dropped down to noon, so now it's a bit of an adjustment for some of y'all. But uh, the uh, if you need to know or confirm any of that, make sure you go check us out. Especially Facebook, Harry does an amazing job of keeping up on that. And, yeah, uh, yes. Gives us a uh, make sure to keep a constant like stream going. Mostly copy what she does on Twitter and what he does. That's fair. So, you know what? We've got a pretty we've got a pretty stellar team. So big hand to uh, Bridget, Garrett, and Harry. All right, and as always, Angus. And Angus, yes. of course, for making all this possible. He's simultaneously, he's simultaneously playing and running the stream, so, you know. That's what's happening if I'm ever looking over there, because he's checking on things. That's fair. That's, uh... It's just a mirror. You're just looking at yourself. <laughs> checking on things yeah, in my hair. Yeah. Um, unless I missed anything else, I think we are ready to roll on in. So, perfect. Okay, I think, that's a, I think that's a good sign. I think that's a slightly above average sign. All right, so last time on our adventures through Kala Anor, the party left Quain and started making their way across the uh, mistlands of Relgar over towards uh, Lake Elawir to uh, travel over to Mara. You're escorting Cadius LaRue's caravan. He's a Samoyne that's uh, recently returned from the Fathom, the Fathom Dark Isles, far, far out in the uh, land of Moon. And you helped him to solve a couple of problems that led him to uh, deciding that you guys might know what you're doing. So he hired you all on as guards for his expedition. Uh, fortunately, too, as you were ambushed on the way by a group of bandits who uh, were uh, 
Well, they were pretty well organized, but they bit off a bit more than they could chew with you, with you guys. Um, so after a pretty brutal series of events, uh, they decided they elected to uh, retreat. And uh, Hellry, Hellry, after being filled with battle lust, uh, did manage to uh, revive the two that were killed and send them on their way as well, uh, with the promise that they would be done with this line of work and that they would uh, proceed on to more honorable occupations. I'm not sure whether it was an ambush or entrapment, actually. <laughs> so I have a question about that real quick. Mm. So I know whenever Hellry heals someone, she leaves scars. Oh, yeah. So the person who doesn't have a hand currently has a full scar around the neck where it got reattached and where their other limb. Mm -hmm. What does the person who got burnt to a crisp look like? That hair ain't never going back. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hairless cat for the rest of her life, but only on the top half of the body. It's not oh, a downstairs, she's all fur, which is great. Not a cat. <laughs> Have you seen not a cat? I thought there was a, oh no, sorry, tiefling. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that just, that's just appropriate for a tiefling. Mm -hmm. Now Have she just looks even more bad. Have you seen the Have you seen the Deadpool, yes, it's exactly the same. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so y'all haven't seen, y'all don't know exactly what's coming to that yet. But, no, it's it's like a <laughs> um, you brought them back, and Caddius, very grateful for your effort to uh, offer you all a bonus, which you took in the form of an additional diamond, very nearly lost in the swamp upon it being uh, very poorly lost to the diamond back. Um, Kaz, she dropped it. <laughs> Kaz, I, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, no, I know, but I'm getting another over here. Um, <laughs> You made your way the rest of the way through the Mistlands, eventually stopping in the small town of Letty's Rest, which lies right on the western coast of Lake Elevator. Uh, while here, you found some accommodations for the night. Um, you had a couple of uh, run-ins with uh, some local, well, not really run-ins, but you know, spent some time looking around the local uh, scenery, uh, spent some time out of the lake, kind of recovering your energy after your ordeal. And Helry had a uh, interesting encounter with a strange robed figure. Um, uh, Leora was here for that. However, he uh, unfortunately pretty well saw Helry muttering to herself, and some strange claw marks appearing on Helry's cheek. And that's about all he knows. However, you did find a crow feather quill pen in your uh, pocket after that. And that is about where we left off with all of you retiring for the night into the uh, cabins out back behind the inn where uh, other Savoyan crews have been housed previously. Um, you were all setting up for uh, watches for the night. Um, and if, you, and if, uh, if I remember right, we had Hellry and Sars on a watch together. Middle of the uh, night. Middle of the night. Um, as long as a sleep under one of the wagon seats in prep form, so if there is a problem, then we'll be there to back up the guards. Okay. I think I have first watch. Okay. So I was Perfect. Like, I'll take one of the watches with somebody. Not sure. Hold up. Cool. Yes, maybe third watch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Door open. Okay. And I think I need all the four of us before my watch is health. Mm hmm. Okay, sounds good. So uh, we were saying first watch with Kaz, and anybody else uh, up with you as well, Kaz? I guess not. Edwin will be up. <laughs> Edwin will be up again. Edwin needs four hours of sleep, so. Okay, sleeping. sounds I'm good. Watches. I'll be up working on outputs. <laughs> All right, sounds good. So, uh, first watch begins. You are standing outside of the uh, small cabin where the rest of y'all have been set up. Uh, it's not really like, it's nothing too crazy in terms of accommodations, a single story, kind of just a large uh, enclosed area with a couple of, with bunk beds kind of lining the walls, as well as a couple of dressers and, and chests on the floor for any belongings you might need. There is also a uh, small hearth as well off to one corner um, with a iron sort of stove pipe going out the ceiling. Um, so you set up outside. Um, the night is calm. You can see stars kind of s every so often being obscured by the rolling clouds and fog that are kind of constantly moving through this area, though it seems to be a pretty beautiful night uh, with some glimmers of moonlight that are uh, shimmering off the surface of Lake Elowir nearby. Excellent. All right. So um, it was uh, you and Edwin and then 
and then uh, Desmond, you were working on the outfit. Are you doing that inside or outside? Um, if there's room inside, I'll do it. There is room inside. Um, most of the party at this point is all sort of bunked down for the night, so you're kind of uh, sitting on your bunk just working on this uh, as the night wanes on. All right. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me a quick tinkering check. Mm-hmm. Uh, Three plus uh, seven. Are we all together? Yeah. Uh, if we're like just settling in for the night, then I would probably be hanging out while he's working on it since I you know, would be around. Um, well, I think... Yeah, you could help out for the first little bit. Okay, uh, I'll give you guidance. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Before that. Oh, you're at D4. So uh, we are at uh, 14. Okay. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, you make some good progress. It's uh, initially you kind of have a few minor setbacks. Like you're feeling a little bleary eyed from your uh, from your adventures of the day, um, and then you feel a large hand on your shoulder as Hellray approaches you um, and offers you guidance. But thanks. Yeah, no problem. You want to make sure to reinforce the inseam. That's where a lot of people uh, uh, slack off a little bit. And uh, I tell you what, when you're bending over, fighting, doing anything particularly acrobatic or strenuous, that shit will rip right up the back. And that is the most embarrassing thing that can happen in a fight. I can tell you. Tear in the seat of the pants? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I can imagine. they yeah. being quite embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Anyway. You're doing a good job. Thank you. <laughs> you made some good progress on it. Um, and whose outfit are you working on right now, by the way? Just to... uh, let's see. We've got uh, Hellies and Nobody's are all done, so uh, I guess we'll work with the larger pieces first. The probably Saurus then? Yeah, so probably Saurus. Yeah. 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 The three of us will attract even more attention. <laughs> yeah. yes. Oh shit, they're in uniform! <laughs> they have swords! <laughs> And big pockets. What? <laughs> What's yeah. happening? Can we look closer? Are you pretty much all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Taz and Edlin, go ahead and roll perception checks. How's your perception? Uh, I have no idea. Um, okay, I guess. Uh, uh, 22. Ooh. Uh, 14. 14. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, for me, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> you kind of crane your, you kind of crane your ears. Edlon, you hear some like splashing and uh, sounds of what sounds to be like uh, lake fauna out uh, in the water. Uh, it seems to be a fair distance away from shore. Um, however, kind of looking out that direction, you see some faint ripples and wakes, uh, sort of, of of things moving beneath the surface, uh, disturbing the sort of moonlight. Okay. Okay. Would that be a good time to go for a swim? <laughs> Stay out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> I just said, No man, I did. That's the so out of character. It's <laughs> always a no. call of the void. <laughs> Um, the rest of your watch proceeds without incident, um, and uh, eventually you find that it's time to uh, probably go ahead and go wake up uh, Saurus and uh, and Hillary. I use, I use Mage Hand to wake him up, so you know. There, I will continue. I'm fine. Yeah. Good morning. Mm. Your turn. All right. Yeah. Oh. Stretch. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Curl up under the seat and go to sleep on one of the legs. Okay, sounds good. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> it's quite a nice night, actually. Yeah. I like Barbara. Yeah. It's almost as pretty as back home. Kind of miss Barbara, actually. Yeah. You're from Bessie, you said, right? Well, no. Uh, I uh, lived in Bessie for a while. I'm actually from here in Avonlock. So you would have been up from near Avonlock uh, in an area a little way sort of southwest of it, around the lake. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're you're along the you're along the lake. This is honestly fairly 
uh, nostalgic for you, as many places in, in Rogar are kind of waterfront like this, but this feels almost like the same sort of quiet community that you hail from. Yeah. Um, your parents trying to find a calmer life. Right. Yeah, just a little southwest of Avonlaw. We lived on a lake, so this is uh, this is like a reminder of a home hmm. That's quite nice. Yeah. I liked Avonlaw when I spent a little time in there. You swing through? Yeah, I spent some time there. I had to leave, but uh, I liked the time I spent there. Yeah. Peaceful place. Mm -hmm. A little too peaceful for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the excitement of traveling around. It's been really good. Yes. Uh, I don't want to harp on this. I don't want to lie. Yeah, I overheard you and Desmond talking, so I don't want to. Well, I don't recover that yeah, no, on it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to harp on it. Um, look, I know what you, you did what you did, and you did what you had to do. I, uh, I certainly don't blame anybody for losing their temper or losing their cool. And, uh, I think it's just good you had the ability to fix it up, because, uh, it's, uh, it's hard, uh, dealing with that. I know better than most what it's like, and, uh, I guess I wish at some point in my life that I had the ability to fix, fix that kind of rage. Yeah. Yeah, see, I, I kind of figured you'd get it. You're a bit of a two-stage rocket. <laughs> <laughs> so to <laughs> <we> speak. What's so wrong? Wow. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's it's just like with you. You, you, get to, uh, you get to one stage, and then you get to another place where, uh, where somebody's got to go down. And, and I'm glad I was able to fix that up too. I just, um, if it's too prior in question, you know, tell me bugger off, that's fine. But, um, when you lose your cool, I feel like you're in control. Never did for me. Um, when I lose my cool, uh, yeah, um, I mean, I wanted, from the moment that fight started, I wanted to take that, uh, little shit down. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I heard the rest of the group, and I just didn't feel like listening. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I was, uh, I was in, yeah, I was. And, uh, but, but, I talked with, uh, I talked with this one, and I, uh, I promise that that's not ever gonna happen again. If the whole group saying, "All right, let's let's just put the brakes on," then that's what we're gonna do. That's not that's not gonna happen again. Yeah. That's good to hear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. I'm sorry to bring this up. I know it's probably a sore subject. And like I said, I don't want to beat a dead horse about it, but. Uh, yeah, but like, uh, yeah, so it, so, it, so it is the same for you, right? Yeah, it's um, part of why I was in Mara in the first place. Um, actually, kind of the reason I left Avonlaw, I, uh, I, did, I did shows in Avonlaw for a while. Did a little pit fights in the bars and stuff and entertained people and it was all good fun. And uh, one day I got into a fight and Guy was good. I was going against him and uh, got my blood up. Next thing I know, I was seeing him red and he wasn't moving. Yeah. And uh, it was a bit of a shock for me because it went from all good fun to me losing control. And uh, it's kind of a bit of a wake up call for me. Sure. So I, uh, looking for some monster hunting out in the bar with the seal gear and ran into y'all. The rest is history. That makes sense. If you're fighting a dragon, you don't have to worry about, uh, oh, I lost control. It's like good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. 
Well, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Maybe I'm just uh, maybe I'm just picking up a little bit of what you got going on. Mm. Well, hopefully not too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye, man. Yes, please. Uh, very much appreciate it. Sure. How's the night looking? So, go ahead and roll perception checks. Okay. Six. Six. Okay. Oh, and I'm rolling this again. Nine. Four. <laughs> You're both kind of getting into your conversation and into the bottle a bit. Um, and the, <laughs> the night kind of just sort of, the watch kind of passes you by. Um, it's still pretty quiet. Um, nothing particularly seems out of place uh, throughout it. And eventually you find that it's probably time to go wake up uh, Penny and uh, the Oro. Hey, wake up, my says. I'll sleep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> then good morning. Uh huh. <laughs> right. I don't know if uh, I was thinking about this the other day. You know what? Uh, little Edlin over there. Mm-hmm. He all uh, he all curled up on the uh, wagon. Oh yeah, I see him. He's faking. Is he? I'm not faking. Uh huh. <laughs> He says. I know. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I don't know what else does. Well, I don't know what else as well as you would, but uh, uh, you ever thought about that? Turning into an animal and pretending to sleep? Sure. I'm not pretending. <laughs> he says. <laughs> he says. Uh, I, I guess it wouldn't work, huh? No, I mean, it's, it's cuddly and snug. And can be really nice if it's cold out and then you have fur, but if you don't, you just kind of stare. Huh. There. I mean, sometimes it's fun because you can, like, use your tail to make little patterns in the dirt. And that's kind of therapeutic, sure. but it, 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 it's not sleep. Someday. Well, if you'd like, sometime, uh, if we're in a uh, safe place and not, like, having to trade watches and stuff, uh... I can just uh, make sure that everyone's around for safety, and then I can just knock you the fuck out. You know what? <laughs> all right. Okay. I'll take you up on that. Do that sometime. All right. All right. So you can finally get that full eight hours and like know what it's like. That sounds lovely. You know, I once I took some some mushrooms, mm-hmm. not the same ones that we had in the stew, different yeah. type, and I was asleep for three days. Wow. It was the best experience of my life. Oh man. Shit, I feel like I understand a lot about you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I think I, especially if we're doing shifts and whatnot, I can't be asleep for three days straight. Sure. Yeah. Also, I'm, I'm not going to knock you out. That was a joke. Concussions are no fucking joke. <laughs> That'd be and real I, bad. Oh. Uh, real bad. I'm sure like eight hours would heal everything up. <laughs> it does seem that way sometimes, does it not? <laughs> it's fine, we're gods, what could happen? What could possibly go wrong? Man, just chicken with the DM on that one. <laughs> Jeez. But, uh, <laughs> little deal. If you go down right at the end of some future fight or something like that, and it's just like time coincidence, perfect, you go down and then we, you know, like, take, clear the field. I will not let you die, but I will not wake you up. Deal. I read a book about a girl like that, and then someone kissed her, and that was weird. Because I woke her up, and, like, I'd be, yeah. I'd be like, excuse me, you did not ask for it. I did not ask for that, and Ooh. so why are you kissing me? And also, why'd you wake me up? He wouldn't kiss anybody ever again. I'd rip his book and lips off. There we go. Yeah, consent anyway. is key. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Consent is important. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I feel like we have talked for too long. All right, have a good <laughs> sleep. All right. I wish I could do the same. Mm-hmm. I know the feeling. And you, you, you kind of see me over on my bunk. I've just been like, writing for the last couple hours because I meditated like, early on. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Why the fuck did we stand watch? I don't know. We have. Anyway. <laughs> good night. Good <laughs> night. <laughs> Uh, nobody gets up there. <laughs> up in front of the fireplace, nobody's passed out. Um, Keto has a little bucket of water. Aww. <laughs> <And> he's chilling. <laughs> 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 
just hanging out. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> <laughs> just for a hot tub in there. And I'm gonna need a cardiac from both of you for a sec. Oh. <laughs> it's too early. It's too early for a There we go. I'm sleeping during this. <laughs> yes. rumbling and uh, it seems to be coming from nobody um, and he just sort of starts chanting and I, it's also too early so I can't, <laughs> I can't do it I really wanted to but um, yeah the the mumbling in the sleep comes back and there's a sort of rhythmic chanting coming out of him um, and Keto gets on top of him and starts going <laughs> I pull on my little drums and accompany you. <laughs> I just kind of walk over. I wonder what you're dreaming about. And I take a little rip of jerky and I just hand it over to Keto. How do you eat it? <laughs> <laughs> he uses one know. tentacle to eat it, the rest of them are still just like a weird sun. You know, um, I haven't seen that, but we haven't really slept in the same room so much, so I don't know. I first thought that was his stomach. I thought you were outside. Well, we, we were just about to start our watch, I think, when he mm -hmm. started doing this, mm -hmm. so... Well, I guess still we should keep an eye out. Cause I, that's curious. So are you, like, sitting up during this, or, like, just, uh, like, asleep a sitting, or, like... That's a good question. Which one's funnier? <laughs> <laughs> he's sitting stark upright with perfect posture, but he's totally asleep. Yeah. <laughs> just carve That is what I have in mind. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm sitting there putting away my litter and uh, starting to work on my experimental elixir. I don't know why the hell we fought anybody. They just scare them off anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just hard to to the morning. Kaz, you don't look like you didn't get any sleep. What's up? Half of you were talking and the other one was chanting. <laughs> <laughs> Only like two of you actually sleep. <laughs> I don't know if he's uh, doing anything in that dream, but uh can walk over and just lay a hand on his shoulder. He won't be just fine. I'll cast the guidance in case he has to make a skill check. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. In for it. You're already ready for any skill. That's pretty good. Thanks. <laughs> Tentacles hanging up, I'll just like you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no one's stealing from us inside this building. They're just still looking up now. Keto kind of shifts so his whole like upper part is just like a, as a bird head mask looking thing. Oh my god! It's not like three dimensional out or anything, but it's like the pattern of it, you know, going down. And he's like, it's all black and doing the same thing, basically. <laughs> my brother from another mother. That's <laughs> This is a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the Oro and Penny. So at this point I'll just yeah, head outside and kind of take a seat somewhere and just start doing kind of a little strumming and plucking type things. Something common. <laughs> not loud, not meant to keep you up, you want to be a lullaby. Lullaby type thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will make sure that it works with the baseline that he's providing. <laughs> you have to knock me out too to sleep. <laughs> so, Penny, is this a standard day with Clan's Destiny? This has been quite something. Uh, well, I guess so. Um, so far we've, we've saved a farm which actually was a displacer beast, which was like a little bit sad because it was a creature, but also it was killing all the llamas. Mm. And and that was fine and normal. And then we bought a hill and that was a little weirder um, and ate us. Tried to, ate some of us. We had the octopus, which you know, octopi. And uh, you know, we really haven't caught people much. This is weird. This is a weird day. I haven't really had to caught people so much. I didn't like it. It's definitely harder. I have not experienced much of that myself. Me and Sir Gavinier did have to deal with a group of bandits here and there, but usually we could just 
scare them off pretty quickly. These people didn't really get the message until a little too late. Yeah, that was that was weird. What about the, the other clan that you were with? Did they fight people much, or was it just big, big, scary monsters? Well, again, I haven't actually been with a full, like, large group like this before. It was really just me and the, um, and the Uro Knight that I was looking for for a while, like... What, what about the ones that fought the, the... The Hydra? Yeah. It was just me and him. Oh, wow. So oh. we didn't really... In, oh. We knew there was a beast, we didn't really know it was a Hydra. So we went and we fought it, and he... Stay behind to fight it off to let me escape. So, but he's like since then I've really not been with any other large adventuring groups. I've only like that was years ago, and I've only now really built up the nerve, and I finally feel I've got enough skills that I could actually hold my own and be more of an asset. But still, definitely have that fear of you know history repeating itself. Yeah. Well, if it was just you and one other person, I mean. Safety in numbers. I was really surprised that that group attacked us. There's eight of us now, plus the caravan, and there was only like four or five of them. Honestly, though, they were they were doing a lot. Like I, I before I know it, I'm pretty sure I was on the ground within about six seconds of that fight starting. That was that was terrifying. Yeah, but you got up and then you brought some lions with you. It's true. Yep. The your own lions. It is, it is a bit of our specialty, but oh, it was an exciting day, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, what are you, what are you most excited about now that you're out here and that you know if it's been a couple of years? I mean, I, I just kind of live in my own head a lot of the times so and just imagine or try to imagine or write down what what I think the future would hold for me. What What are you hoping? For? What are you looking? For? Honestly, I'm just hoping for more stories. I'm hoping for stories from people leading interesting and exciting lives. Oh, pretty much what I've been doing the last few years has been telling stories and learning stories of rich people that are not really been doing too much. They just they or they hire me to just basically write slander about one of their uh, one of their enemies, and it's all. I mean, it's good pay, probably better than what I'm going to be getting from a lot of this potentially, but. Um, it's not fulfilling. It's not. Those are not stories that will go down in history. I can already tell these are stories that will go down in history. And I want to be part of that. I want to help record that. Yeah. That's my goal. That sounds. Yeah, that sounds a lot better than being cooped up with someone like Larian. Yes. I mean, I'll admit, Larian's not totally bad. I, I actually kind of enjoy his company. He has great food, but. How do you feel? I don't know that. Says a voice from under the seat. Oh, um. <laughs> Hello, do you want to actually come out and chat or just. I'm sleeping. <laughs> he says. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I think. I think you'll fit in really well here. Thank and you. I think you and Kaz will get along really well too. He's really into stories also. He's kind of quiet though, so you have to talk to him. Hmm. Well, I don't have to I don't have to talk to him about stories and see what learn about his favorites. I'm just uh, I can already tell the potential in this group is just incredible. It's truly an inspiring place to be. Hmm. And with that, I'm just settle back into my music and yeah. And keep an eye out for anything happening. Okay, it's also kind of Set on a swivel, just. Ooh. And I'll probably bring little cats and just shoot the shit with Kit for a while and just chat with him. Okay. So, oh. Speak of animals, yeah. She probably did that just though. <laughs> speak of animals. Um, okay. So you kind of. Um, you sit for a minute and uh, you begin to like. Reach out and contact Kip. Um, Kip has been kind of swiveling his head around, looking around at the at the stars. Every so often, Leora will mention something that uh, sort of kept just kept attention. He'll go over and like peck Leora on the side of the head briefly, and then like look back around. Um, I'll get scratches when I read that. Um, and as the uh, ritual cast sets in, you kind of. 
and uh, you can feel suddenly like the language of birds and owls kind of flowing into your mind. Who, who's language? Who? Uh, uh, who's language? Uh, oh, I love it. Uh, Nobody. Oh boy. <laughs> Turns out he's been a Time Lord this whole time. He's Doctor Who. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're always asking who, but not how. That's, <laughs> that, that, that story was on my shoulder the whole time. <laughs> so I, I just want to. I can't unhang me. I haven't officially introduced myself to you. Hello, darling. Oh my goodness, it's been so long since I've had a good conversation. Oh, well, oh my goodness. Well, uh, I don't even know what to talk about. I've been traveling with this buffoon for years now, and he hasn't had anything to say, but he gives the best scritches, I must say. So I suppose I can tolerate his company for a while. But really, tell me all about yourself. All right, well, my name's Penny, and I'm from just west of Paris, and I like nature and outside and talk to animals, and because I think that they, they usually have just, they're more authentic, they're more true to who they are, they're less into, like, money and Oh, absolutely. We're honest to a fault. Have absolutely no straight proclivities of any kind. Um, don't ask any more questions about me. Tell me more about you. <laughs> I have no reason to not trust you. So, <laughs> I don't sleep. I can also stay in the dark. Um, I, have, I can't turn into an owl yet, but I want to at some point because I'd love to learn how to fly. I think that just sounds amazing. I highly recommend it. I highly. <laughs> Because you fly the air. You're so clever. Absolutely, we could be birds of a feather. Oh my god. It's just a BBEG. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, 100%. This is who we're fighting at the end of this campaign. Probably on Kip's side to the end. Which is that, Oh my god. Well, I've traveled with you for years. I've learned everything. <laughs> just just chit chat, not, not a whole lot. Up the night. And, yeah. Uh, you continue your conversation. Uh, Kip um, asks you plenty of questions about your past and where you've come from. Um, how, mo- how much of this do you tend to answer? Um, I, I don't go too into it. I just feel like I just told my entire life story a couple of hours ago. So I don't feel like just repeating all of it because I, you know, obviously nobody knows everything. And, you know, so nobody I heard nobody heard it at all. <laughs> um, so I just kind of I talk about my my parents and my sister and a little bit about the tribe and um, yeah, uh, I mentioned briefly how how I got into adventuring via uh, meeting some ragtag mercenaries that I wasn't supposed to heal, but I definitely did. And I, People were like, well, you shouldn't do that. And I was like, well, it's people, and I should help people. Right? Why should I judge people? And I'll just do it. And they were really great. You shouldn't and, judge people, really. It's, you shouldn't judge people. No judging books by their number, of course. Yeah, yeah. They were bloody. They needed help. I helped them. And it was fine. And it's not like they actually ripped us off or anything like that. They were good people. They just like doing things for money. And they were drunk, which my family was a little, like, judgy for, which was weird. Because they drink ever. And most of my friends drink. It's fine. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's been an absolute fool. Oh, 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 oh. 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 Oh, oh. We'll chat later. Packs the Oro in the side of the head again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right there, you've kind of been watching this entire thing yeah, going been down. Very strange. I, I've just been playing my music, but kind of missing a few notes here and there. Just <laughs> really disconcerting having you hooting at my owl. <laughs> <laughs> Which, <laughs> the silent audio inside the cabin in my head is phenomenal. It's just a few planked, misplaced notes and two owls just hooting at each other. <laughs> what the hell is going on out there? <laughs> That's not happening, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> the caravan that was traveling, they must be so rich. Everyone over in the Blue Ridge caravan is like, who the hell did we hire? <laughs> this is why they put us in the cabins outside. They want us far away from everyone else. Well, I guess we got our money's worth already, so this is fine. <laughs> 
Uh, you know what? They fucking win it, but I can't argue with results. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so happy about Kit. <laughs> <laughs> so correct me if I'm wrong, but it's pretty in the cuttlefish on tour, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Next. Is it still alive? Yes. It's still alive. Yeah. It's still alive. <laughs> it only seems to be getting angrier. Oh, um, Next time. All right, go ahead and give me perception checks real quick. Okay. Oh, nat 20 oh, for 24. Okay. 14. Yeah, roll my. Do you see the dress? <laughs> um, I'm jumping in the water. I'm ready. Yoro, with your elvish oh, nice. eyes, uh, the dark poses. The dark poses no real difficulty to you, and um, you kind of take a short walk around just to kind of get a sense for the the, the layout. And um, as you're walking sort of around behind the inn, you see a distant cabin with what appears well not a cabin but a, a little house, a cottage that has what appears to be a large garden behind it, and uh, you see a candle moving around from within it, and then a uh, figure kind of stealing out and ducking away and heading into the darkness. Um, I'm going to at least follow for a little while, see if I can see where that figure is going. Okay, and actually, so that cabin, was that where our caravan, like, was that anything relevant, or just somebody in This was different, this wasn't one of the, uh, this wasn't one of the cabins associated with the inn. This was a different house, a little, a little ways away. Um, okay. And then moved away from our camp, I think, encampment, or for the, oh. Oh, away from our encampment. In that case, I'll leave and be. Okay. Yeah. All right, sounds good. I'll, I'll mention it to Penny when I get back to our kind of watch point, but. Okay. So, um, Penny, there was probably nothing, but I did see somebody kind of sneak off from one of the houses nearby, so... Again, don't think it's a big issue. You didn't feel like following a random citizen of town, but... Maybe it's just like a teenage kid going out to meet meet their brother. Oh, Although, don't teenage kids prefer late night rather than early mornings? I just going to pop out from under the seat in full size and go, um, was it, and describe the house where we bought the tomatoes over there. Sounds pretty similar. Sounds like the right area and had the large garden out back. I think that could have been it. Oh, I guess they got our message. Um, I would down and go back under the seat. <laughs> oh, maybe. Should I? Should I message him? If that was... I have sent him. Okay, I forgot. Yes. Um, tell them good luck in your future ventures. Try something safe. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and send it to... Um, actually... Based on the form, like roughly the size and all that, given I got an F20, would I think there's any chance it could have been um, Renian? But to be a medium sized humanoid, uh, really hard to make out individual characteristics, even with all the vision in the dark mm -hmm. um, from this distance. You were seeing them from probably about 200, 250 oh, yeah. feet away. Um, so it was definitely like hard to make out any details, but looked to be a medium build. Could have been, could have been Renian. Might have all, could have been Mom, any number of, but at least not definitely not Renian. Yeah, yeah. Didn't okay. immediately jump out at you as, you know, different. I will talk to school in the morning, and we may want to send them a message. But at least that is an that's an option, and very well could have been that. Okay. And now I'll back under the seat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. Go the fuck to sleep. <laughs> I, got a, uh, I got a file on my experimental elixir. Ooh. Oh, okay. Good, good. Give me two seconds here. Also, I couldn't. Is the blue first? Was that a three or was that a two? Uh, yeah, I can watch the video if you don't. I think it was a three, but I don't know why. Do, 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 do. The blue Ferris one, um, that was a three. Okay. Oh. So I got five this Alright, so a five, um, as you mix this potion, um, you kind of are like going in all at once, you just, uh, uh, 
and you sneeze into it as you're going. Oh. And what was initially kind of this sort of uh, greenish swirling elixir suddenly goes <laughs> and inside you can see some of the interior, the bottle starts to look almost like these silvery clouds. You swiftly <laughs> put the cork in and trap the clouds inside. Mm. Okay. This potion only obeys commands it doesn't deem to be stupid. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. It's back, folks. <laughs> We're opening that question. <laughs> Put back on town. <laughs> I can't do that here. I'm sorry, Dave. Is there a smell on? Um, you crack it open briefly and kind of give it a uh, give it a, a whiff. Um, you get like uh, it's like fennel. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know how a cloudy fennel bottle. Yay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, the watch seems to pass without further incident, and the sun begins to crest, uh, returning back. Uh, from the west and traveling across the sky eastward, uh, reverse the direction it came the previous day, um, as is standard, as is usual for Amor. Um, and you, uh, it sort of dawns with a, a brilliant orange golden cast on the horizon, and you are treated to the ever brilliant sight of the mists of Rogar being just ignited as of, you know, a wall of fire in the distance uh, before the sun starts to actually peak and crest above it and illuminate the world in the usual daytime glow. Um, the rest of you kind of wake up and uh, begin your day, grabbing some breakfast and starting to reconvene. <laughs> you know, tentacles as we wake up. He kind of wriggles around in a bucket once uh, you put him back. All right, and let's change the music so it's not sleepy anymore. Okay. Um, at this point, Cadius and the other sailors have started to make their way out of the other cabin. Uh, they see uh, Penny and Lioro out front, uh, along with Edlin and whomever else might be heading out of the house by now. I'll go ahead and get a stretch, get some of that fresh morning air. Oh. Uh, mm -hmm. Alright. Well then, I'm uh, going ahead and secure passage across the lake. Uh, we're going to be leaving here in the next hour, so uh, if we all want to meet down by the docks, then uh, we'll be all set to go. Alright, sounds like a plan. Alright, we'll take his best part of the day to get across the lake over to Barra, so I uh, expect to go ahead and find accommodations over there in the town for the night. Alright. Anything we should expect on the lake for pirates or nothing? Uh, well, not in the daytime usually. Worst is usually at night when folks are trying to, you know, swim or sail around in the moonlight. That's a bad idea. But uh, during the day, nah, it's fine. Generally speaking, especially with a full, uh, full ferry like we've got. It's pretty well. It's pretty well populated out there. Everything stays towards the bottom. All right. I hear Caddy is outside and everyone out there. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, you merge. Hey, good morning to you. Is there anything missing? Uh, like what? I mean, like among the the cargo? Yes. Not that we found so far, but we're still taking inventory for the day. Is there a reason you expect something to be missing? We left those. Hooligans alive. Oh, yeah, that's true. Well, did you all see anything in the night? Well, uh, no. I did see a figure leaving a one of the houses in town, but they were moving away from us, and I didn't see any, any interactions with our actual supplies, so. Yeah. Um, Coming in out of houses? It's not right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, I did. I was thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I, I may actually want to send a message to Remy, just to let him know that we are thinking about them and oh, and kind of nudge them hopefully in the right direction. Do you guys mind if I 
do so, or any anything in particular. I mean, if you're paying for potions, sure. Okay. <laughs> I will cast Sunday. Dear Renny, hope you are all recovering nicely. Good luck in your new safer endeavors. We will be checking in every so often. Regards, Leora. And that is 25 words. <laughs> <laughs> Get back how in the fu- <laughs> I must say, you proved yourselves worthy adversaries <laughs> upon the road. And I wish you all the best in uh, your future travels. And you done. And <laughs> and it's time to kill again. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, I'll convey that to the killer, but I mean, well, at least he got the message, so hopefully he realizes that we are... I didn't actually say it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so fucking pompous. <laughs> Wait, did he receive the message, or did he get the message? He at least received the message. I maybe should have been more threatening, but I think I think yesterday was enough of a threat. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. We'll see. And if you're, you know, saying we're going to check back in, you can always switch it up and be nice, 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 and then be like, hey, asshole. But then, you know, just to throw him off, like you're angry if, if he's, you know, going to act up, and then just be nice again. I prefer to be polite in most of my writings, but we'll see. That's probably what the best. What about You could be like, oh, you can mother saw you didn't miss you. Oh, you can get trouble. <laughs> Passive aggressive sending. It's so much less than them too, so uh, we can keep an eye on We are not coddling a group of bandits. And we are not going to be forgetting about them. So it's time to Yeah, ain't gonna lie, that's pretty sinister. But, uh, <laughs> you I know, think, uh, I guess it's best to keep an eye on them. Oh, I recommend we talk to the bar and write about it just to make sure they're on the lookout. And, uh, honestly, they should probably be, you know, rotten behind some bars. So I'm surprised y'all brought them back, but, uh, hey, you know, you're the professionals here. They were non lethal, so. It didn't feel quite right to be looking towards them. You know, if we get a bunch of people who then want to also do good deeds, we could we could train them just enough, and they could be like the the destineers or something like that. Ooh, I like it. And then we can have little groups of like clone destiny. Clone destiny. Oh, oh my shit. god! We are not adopting a group of bandits. We're adopting multiple groups of bandits. <laughs> You realize that is worse. <laughs> Just a mini. <laughs> no money. Hey, uh, uh, no money for game. Money. I know this is all rough for you. Uh, it was in the reassurance. I'm pretty sure everybody's just fucking around. It's not actually gonna happen. It's a it's a thing we do to lighten the lighten the dark mood when we're in one. So uh, you ain't got nothing to really worry about. There is a dark mood. <laughs> no, why would you think that? <laughs> <laughs> I did not notice it. Uh, we're going to be at the dock, so uh, whatever you all have done here, uh, just meet us out there. That's all right. Yeah, uh, you. Sure. All right. I'll bet, I'll bet they have the best breakfast they ever had, though, after encountering us. <laughs> Yeah, but then I got my hands on it. You've never seen the breakfast so still. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it was so still. <laughs> so Shame. <laughs> All right. The uh, the room crew heads off towards the docks. Uh, the rest of you, you've got a you know another couple minutes to make any preparations you want uh, around Letty's rest uh, before heading out for the day. Mm-hmm. What are you looking for? Fruit Danish and locks. It doesn't take too long. Uh, you get a hold of fruit Danish and locks. Beautiful. I'm Come so on. hungry. That sounds pretty good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have the technology. Maybe. I mean, honestly, it sounds like a winning combination to me as well. 
All right, the uh, rest of you, I imagine, also are going around grabbing some breakfast, heading into the inn, picking some stuff up uh, for the day. Good. Before we head out, uh, a little bit of item management. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we did come across a couple of useful items in that bandit encounter. Uh, we have a couple of greater potions of healing in that enlarged potion that we came across. Um, I just think we need to spread this out a little bit, so I'm not carrying five potions of healing. It would probably be a good idea. Is it too heavy? It's not heavy, I just don't think I'm the best person to be carrying around a bunch of potions. Right. Okay. We should give her the enlarged potion. That would actually be hilarious. <laughs> it would be quite I'd funny. be normal size. Would we be the same height, or would you be taller? Ooh. Ooh, can I take it now? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd probably wait until a more opportune, you know, than to just oh. shit some giggles. I don't know, I want to see this. <laughs> okay, I'm also quite curious how Kip, or what would happen to Oh, Kip would love that. Mm. He had a great talk last night. Something about me doesn't trust that bird. <laughs> you would have to drink Crazy. slowly as he grows. Along with my side for years now. I trust him completely. I I'm an uncanny valley. I like small and soft, but when it goes a little too far, my, uh, my it's just a, it's a whole other thing. Kip is currently kind of looking, you know, the other direction. However, he swivels his whole head around. <laughs> he understands what I'm saying. That is no natural beast. <laughs> It's a, at least one of those, and I, I was uh, going to play around with the idea of, uh, of uh, filling up one of these quill spikes with it, and, and uh, I can launch it out of my crossbow, and that, and that can heal you guys. Would you want to do it? Would you want to experiment with the a minor healing potion first? No. <laughs> Healing as the crossbow would do damage. So that wouldn't be a good idea. Heal yeah. damage. Be healing before. Wait, but this is how we can do non-lethal damage. Oh. oh I kill you, but I heal you at the same time. Oh my God. Go ahead and take it, Rita. Right He's looking rough. Load up the good crossbow bolt. <laughs> <laughs> um. Just don't accidentally shoot you in the bandit. Yeah. Cassie. Yes. From my conversation, is Kim a girl? Uh, you get the sense Kip is a boy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I was just double checking because mm -hmm. kept, I kept hearing him, but then I, I had a feeling, so I wanted to check. So I... Do be fair, you did not ask how Kip identified, so. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it was a hour conversation. Yeah. You may have. You oh, get the sense that Kip is a, is a male owl. Oh. Um, he drops off the male. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Male owl. Uh -huh. Message around. I love it. Mm -hmm. Uh, you get the sense he's male, but, uh, give me, give me an insight check. <laughs> Ten minutes of ritual cast, you know. Insight check into my owl. This is concerning. This is good. That's a miss. Ten. Um, kind of hard to get a read on him, um, but, uh, definitely seems to have a, uh, unique perspective and a certain force of personality to him. BBEG perspective. <laughs> Okay. I'll play it pretty close to the best. Mm -hmm. In my experience. I feel like there's a joke in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. It's working. Mm -hmm. We'll get there. <laughs> I'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> we got our best we got our best team on. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, you anything else we were doing before heading out? Oh, uh, how, how, how big a village is this? Oh, Small. Like, we're talking, you know, a little town square with the inn, the general store, and then a couple of surround, and then the, the docks where most of all of the trade stuff is happening and imports and exports. But, uh, is there a smith? Um, yeah, you see there's a small smithy off to one side of the general store. It seems to be more of an adjunct to the general store. Um, it's just actually an open air kind of, uh, not, like, not really a pavilion, but more like a Canopy going out from the side where you know the forge is under there, as well as some basic implements. implements. Um, I don't have to even like have the conversation or whatever, but could I sell my old chainmail for half its you know, or, or could I sell my old chainmail for a decent price? So, uh, gold, full price, obviously, it's used, blah blah. 
You go over there and you see a, uh, uh, it's a human woman. She is a very burly sort of character, kind of leaned over and went, seems to be clanging away on a, on a horseshoe at this point. Um, and she looks up. Oh, hi there. What can I do for you? Uh, I got some old chainmail I'm looking to sell. Wondering if you uh, want to take it off my hands. Oh, that's a uh, pretty good mate. Uh, couldn't really give you that great of a price for it. Around here, I'd recommend trying to sell it over in Barra if you're trying to get a better deal. But uh, I could, I could give you three gold for it. Oh, uh, well, I'll take your uh, professional recommendation then and uh, and uh, try that. But um, I want to find I want to find something else that I can buy because she's nice. Um, uh, you got some daggers lying around? Uh, mostly hunting knives. Uh, good good quality stuff. Good uh, strong iron. I'll take three, please. Oh, all right. Uh, I'll be two, 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 uh, one gold altogether. I will, uh, as long as you're next to the I, I will flip her too, with a good flip, with a 17. Yes. Clank. Um, she looks at the two, and, oh, uh, jeez, well, uh, Sorry, I never learned how to count very good. You have a good day. Sure. Uh, well, here's your daggers. Oh, oh, uh, I, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she gives you three daggers, um, and she also, uh, throws in, looks to be a, a good little number of uh, nails as well as a small, uh, some fixings for a carpenter's kit, just as a bonus. Um, just uh, some good useful crafting kind of implements that might come in handy down the line. Sure. Well, thank you very much. What was your name? Oh, I'm a, I'm a Rora. Rora, Rora, pleasure to meet you. Henry Gilbert. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, uh, Henry. You have a good one. Uh, you as well. Safe travels out there. Thank you. Alright, <laughs> the dirge begins. <laughs> okay. Um, you make your way down towards the docks. Anything else anyone wants to do in town while you're here? Leave? Fair enough. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna head down to the docks and wait for everybody. I wanna get back to Barra. <laughs> All right. Uh, you make your way down. Uh, you make your way down towards the docks. Uh, your feet begin to kind of clomp on the sturdy wooden planks that are sort of proceeding out into Lake Elowere. Um, you see Cadius and the uh, sailors are already loading the wagons onto a large ferry. Um, the ferry itself is uh, it does seem to have kind of a large sail towards the front of it. Um, fairly primitive apparatus, but looks to be enough to catch at least a basic wind to pull them across, and then a large number of oars along the side, and a few additional staff and crew for the ferry. Uh, you see a, uh, looks to be a sturdy elvish woman who's kind of calling the shots and uh, having folks, you know, hop to and start pulling the luggage on board. Um, hey, be careful of that there now. We don't need any damage to our, uh, to our new friends here. All right, and uh, you there, pull in that rope, that's fine. Uh, all right, and you must be the guards, eh? You're, you're, yes. That's it. Yes. Go ahead, yes. make yourselves comfortable. Uh, find somewhere out of the way if you don't mind. Sure. All yeah. right. Of course. Um, she motions you on board. There are a couple of seats around the edges. Um, there's a large railing around the whole thing. It's like kind of square shaped overall. It's more like a barge than anything else. Um, but it seems quite stable. Um, it's very solidly built. And looking over the edge, you can see that it actually descends down quite a ways into the water. Hmm. Um, although the water level itself is only a couple of feet below the actual edge of the boat. Hmm. I'll uh, just quickly kind of lean back over and back. You didn't need any uh, spare hands lifting or hoisting or pulling anything, did you? Well, now that you've uh, well, now that you volunteered, get out there. We got a few more crates on the dock to pull in. Sure, oh, good to me. Look sure, I'll get a chance. I'll just. Whoa. All right then. By the nine hells, you uh, I could use a, a fellow a year a year jib. You couldn't afford me. <laughs> Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Actually, no problem. <laughs> What's your price, though? At least one beer. 
I think I can arrange that. How about, uh, <laughs> I'll give you two just for good measure. All right, sounds good. We'll group and just work on them. Okay. I'm going to stand up and spend one part of inspiration playing a tune for Mantle of Inspiration. No. Okay. And just like have everyone feel like bolstered and moving quicker. Yeah, all at once, like everybody, like, wait, it's up to three people. Uh, four people. Four people. So all at once, like four people, so there's, oh yeah! It's <laughs> like a whole bunch on the, on the deck at once. Oh, all right. I'm gonna hear that? They're coming for your jobs, boys. <laughs> Are you also giving us temporary hit points? <laughs> <laughs> well, the random crew member, sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. hit me and Cyrus with it. <laughs> He's out of here. I think you guys are, are strong enough you're lifting things fine. Sars is I want hit points. Okay, fine. Okay, Sars has got like Who's two hit points. <laughs> Sars has got like two orc sized crates over each arm there. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm trying to make the crew look better. Yeah. 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 <laughs> totally just that That's way. fine. I'm gonna help. I want beer. <laughs> <laughs> I have my own beer. <laughs> I don't notice that Penny's trying to pick that one up. I pick it up from the other side and she's like, ah! <laughs> Let go, let go. Nobody? Uh, I'm going to look through Keo's eyes and have him swim down. Uh, I'm just on the barge, like staring up at the sun. <laughs> okay. And just have Keto go under the barge and like take a look around and make sure he's oh, coming okay. up after us. Okay, cool. Um, you kind of uh, drop Keto in, and again, the rest of you sort of I got teleported to the future for this once, and I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm suspicious of boats, even though I love them. Oh, I'm kind of like standing in front of him doing this. <laughs> Just glassy eyed over. I wish we the boat launch boat. Or the right, so at this point you can still sort, you can see oh. where the, 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 the pilings can go way down into the water about where you were hanging out yesterday. Um, however, the uh, crew member pull in the ropes, uh, sails are set, and uh, a number of crew start to row the boat out into the lake. Um, the, uh, the dog captain kind of, oh, that's done. Uh, Vranwell brought sail, uh, pleasure to meet you. So I understand we got some beer to deliver around that. Oh, be very careful. Yes, thank you very much. She cracks open a nearby cask of ale and pans them out to you. A couple of the other crew look over, hopefully. When we get to the docks. <laughs> All right, well, we got uh, ooh, about six hours sailing ahead of us to get across here. It's a very large lake, of course. Um, so get comfortable, and uh, we'll be arriving oof, come late afternoon, possibly dusk. Question. Uh, I understand. I know that it takes a day to make scrolls. Can I put in six hours of work and like kind of keep doing it over time, or do I need to sit still for a whole day to make a spell scroll? I'm gonna say you can do it over time. Okay. So like, I, you know, like a day to make a scroll is like a day's work, which yeah. is roughly like eight to twelve hours. Okay. Um, so yeah. can I put in? I'm guessing these six hours. Yeah, we'll say you can get about halfway done with a scroll in cool. this period of time. Um, yeah. Hey, hey, how much of that shit you got to have around? The scrolls are the, the building. I'm sure you need to make one. I got a little bit left. This is my last components for this. Take me with you next time you go shopping for that shit. That's actually what I'm doing, Barra. And I'm sure short select hello wine parchments for this. Uh, yes. Oh, so many stuff. Certainly. Yeah. Just get the cheapest shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, we yeah, all have to. Yes, it's a great high, high quality pay that dick. <laughs> Alright. Um, Keto beneath the water, Keto kind of swims along, darting side to side. Um, as the boat is heading out into the light, you can see the bottom drops away deep. Um, you have sort of heard about the different lakes of uh, Abelok and Rogar, but uh, you know, seeing the actual scale of them is a little, a little daunting. Um, it even seems to be reminds you almost of being back out on the coast again, out in the open ocean. Um, you can feel Keto's kind of discomfort of being in fresh water as opposed to salt water, but it, for him, it's not really like a big barrier or anything. But the, Actually, an octopus, technically. That's true, but it's kind of like it's like he did, the difference in salinity is kind of like a little jarring, but you can feel his 
actual physiology adjusting to it. Cool. Um, he loves buoyant, so he keeps sinking and like swimming. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, it's a combination of like breathing and buoyancy. It's a little like it's a little like trying to get off a boat onto solid land, but like for him, it's it's transitioning between different solidities. Um, and he kind of sinks down in the water for a second, and uh, deep down below, um, you sort of see your octopus vision starts to go more and more shades of blue as you're looking. Uh, deep, deep indigos, kind of purpley hints, and uh, diving down below, uh, you see um, that there's sort of this long canopy, these long forests of seaweed drifting up from the bottom. And uh, within the seaweed, you see um, a little bit of movement around the bottom. Uh, a little seems, little to, movement? seems to be like a little movement, though quite a bit of it. Huh. Um, and all at once, you see a, a pale hand reach out, grab the seaweed, and pull it aside, peeking up towards Keto briefly. A large, luminous eyes and pale, sort of slimy skin before it closes the seaweed again and darts away into the into the darkness. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have Keto get back on the boat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you uh, swim back up towards the surface, and Keto kind of you feel a little bit of Keto, Keto's like apprehension. He's yeah. Climbing back yeah, this is what There is something below. Something humanoid. Oh, I don't like that. Like a fish with a human face? Like a human with a wrong face. No, I don't like that either. I don't like fish with a human face. Oh, oh, that was a much worse. Human, human with a fish face? I'm, I'm sorry, I missed. I was done with cats. What do we see? Uh, some kind of thing, humanoid. There's a fish man down there. Below, in the kelp forest, oh, something. That was Tritons. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, we don't. Uh, we try and stay away from the bottom if we're having uh, we try and stay away from the bottom if we ever have to swim. Damn, pirate accent's going away. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think we try and stay away from the bottom if we can. It's uh, not the most hospitable place. Uh, it's known that they're known to be Kappa down there. Um, sort of, well, sounds like you may have seen one. Uh, okay. Not the worst of things, but if one gets a hold of you and when you're swimming about, that's about all she wrote. Um, they're only out in the deeper parts of the lake, of course, and they stay tier towards the bottom as long as it's uh, full daylight out. Good. All right, good. We got nothing to worry about then. You sure you saw one, or was it more like a cup of feeling? <laughs> wow. <gasps> oh, even as I was reading, the boat started sinking. It's the strangest thing. The strangest thing. Oh. Well, uh, I suppose, I don't know how you saw him, but uh, there you go. Now you have a new respect for Lake Galloway. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, without further ado, I suppose, uh, let's be off. So they uh, continue paddling, and you feel yourselves uh, guided out into the lake. And uh, we're going to take a quick break there and reconvene here in about uh, 10 minutes. Alright. Oh. Welcome back to the stream, everybody. Alright, where we left off, the party was on their way across Lake Elowir as the morning sun begins to crest over the uh, over the horizon and into the sky. The sailing is smooth. It's a beautiful day out there. Are gulls kind of uh, careening across through the sky here. Uh, you see several other boats out and about uh, with long lines kind of thrown out and, and nets being pulled in periodically. Um, look to be a couple other barges that are also making their way uh, through the lake. You would know that uh, Lake Elowir has a couple of different access points. Barra is very well known as a, uh, a hub for transportation of goods either away from Barra and up into the Relgar River systems or from the various uh, provinces of Abenwak um, being shipped out through the lakes and funneled down into this area for shipment from Barra. So it's a fairly 
fairly busy lake during the day. Lots of other boats here and there and about. Um, and you just try not to think too much about nobody's report of uh, strange aquatic things in the water. It's fun. It's fun. It was a long way down, incidentally. Yeah. We're talking like a couple hundred feet below the surface. No way they would swim that Yeah, no. It would be really unreasonable, <laughs> honestly. Um, however, as you're as you're moving across, the distant town of Barra comes more and more into focus. There's sheep bleeding on this. That's just not right. There's my sheep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's sheep. sheep. At least you're protected. Guys, why am I holding this sheep? Um, <laughs> why did you do it? <laughs> I just throw it off the hook. Yeah, well, I'll know. How is that always? There's always a freaking um, creature thing. Not doing it again, though. They're a lot of fun. Good, forget about the town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
You can see a couple of gondolas as well are waiting, uh, currently unattached to the tethers towards where the uh, crates are being hooked up. And there are kind of a line of people, both trades folks and uh, workers who are sort of accumulating around that area waiting for things to be attached to the network. Um, the barge is tied up to the docks and uh, your captain we can fly? Well, it's been a pleasure, Talia. Um, but uh, I must be off, uh, hoping to get back across the lake before nightfall. So, um, now that we've got you all disembarked, uh, just a, a fair bit of warning to you. You're probably going to want to stay the night in town. Uh, the roads have been unpredictable of late uh, on the way south. So, uh, be cautious, be careful, recommend traveling only during the daytime if you can. For the seal gears, not to make the usual runs around. Well, the seal gear is a little more concerned. Uh, I, well, the seal gear is a little more concerned with trying to pull in their mm, bounty from the jungles. You know, uh, the bar defenders are doing what they can, the basic guards. But uh, honestly, most of the time, we just sort of recommend folks traveling during the day, as there's only so much they can do. And the seal gear aren't too concerned with trying to wrangle up uh, random groups of bandits, you know. Hmm. Oh, bandits, not monsters? Yeah, a little of both. But a monster they'll respond to. Bandits, not so much. Can't sell bandit parts. Oh, oh they can't. Really well. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't want to I don't want to contemplate. You have been domestic? Anyway, <laughs> thank you for the advice. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome, and uh, it's been a pleasure traveling with you. Uh, feel free to come by anytime. Be happy to take you across the lake again next time. Sure. And we would want to head south from here to hit the club, right? That, uh, that really yeah. So the, you'd be looking to travel south. Um, in fact, you can sort of, on your way across, you weren't really very close to it. However, from the edge of the lake here, uh, sort of towards the south, you can see kind of the distant, uh, as the lake's coast has kind of gone around, you've seen sort of the distant palm trees and sort of windswept areas of the claw garden far to the south. Mm. You know that they aren't really very commonly, uh, folks don't normally take any shipments down there as it's sort of an inhospitable edge of the lake. Um, but from Barra, you could literally just travel along the southern edge of the lake and get into the northernmost reaches of the claw garden. All right. So um, it's kind of up to you uh, what you'd want to do from there. But uh, either way, Caddius Luru, well, uh, I suppose uh, we're going to find some lodgings for the night around here, uh, stay one, top, one more night in Barra before we're going to try and make it to uh, Sarai next uh, tomorrow. So are the shops still open? It's still Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Mara, well, it does sleep, technically, but stays open pretty late. Lots of stuff to do, generally, all uh, hours of the day and or night. Um, but, uh, so whatever you might need, you can probably find it around here. All right. That's almost just like, can we go on the flying boats? Can we go on the flying boats? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can go out there in a minute. Um, will we going with Candice after bar, or will we getting him to bar? No, we were taking him all the way to Betsy. No, no, you were talking. You were, you were talking about taking him to Saray, but uh, to Mara or Saray. Saray to Mara. But he knew you were looking to split off once you hit the quad guard. So it's kind of just traveling as far as you can together. And uh, he offered it. He offered. It was more so about getting across the mist lands than it was about fully, because the uh, Savoy's Highway is pretty well defended, even despite the the captain's warnings. Um, this is one of the more well trafficked routes in all of Honor. So. Did he say the road south was sketchy as well? Uh, she said the road south is dangerous, more dangerous than normal at night. Um, but during the day, not too much of a problem from the south of it. Yeah. So the question is, are we going to keep following Caius down more? Or are we cutting ties here or later on down the road? If I understand correctly, we're, going, we're, we're doing one more dig in this array, and that's when we're splitting off. Was, was sort of the generally, generally discussed idea? Yeah, well, Saraya uh, puts you right on the uh, eastern portion of the claw garden. It's kind of the direct way in. Uh, I suppose you could split off here, but you'd have to go through a bit of a harsher terrain. Well, it's all harsh terrain once you're in the claw garden, but uh, sure. when you're on the northern part, you're also having to deal with anything that might be coming up out of the lake, you know, and uh, things tend to wash ashore in uh, the claw garden that tends to draw stuff up. So, 
Anybody object to spending one night in bar? That's fine by me. Want to do a little bit of shopping? Yeah. Here. Yeah, I can spend some corn. I'll play the boats. Oh, really? Hmm. The boatman makes a good point. What's that? We may choose to invite conflict. I'm not bothered. When we choose to leave is our decision. Uh -huh. We may choose to invite conflict or avoid it. If we choose to invite conflict, do you accept the consequences? Okay. I mean, I expect that uh, based on what I've seen so far, I ain't gonna be the one to have to worry about consequences, but yeah, I'm always down for whatever happens out of the fight. What you did earlier. Yeah. The resources that... The cost of your guilt. Was what? it worth it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, hey, it, uh, yeah. I can tell you that they were a lot more scared than they would have been if we just beat them up and let them go. Made us look a little bit better, too, in terms of building reputation. Hmm. There are some who would disagree. Yeah, well. Can't please anybody. We getting drunk or what? Come on. <laughs> Let's buy some shit and drink some beer. I want to know who the core is and, and what's so important that they have to guard it all the time. Oh boy. <laughs> what is the claw guard? Man. Man. <laughs> what is an Arden and why is it claw? Alright, that's like what, three or four? Go ahead and take an inspiration. <laughs> Stretch of the road down to Saray. Uh, sure. Yeah. That's a little, can't imagine too much trouble, but you know we are going all in the Miss Coil, so man, hey. things get weird sometimes. Hey, Caddis, we're friends, right? I mean, always. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I know that this is a little unusual, and uh, if the answer is no, I understand completely. But uh, seeing as how, uh, sorry, do I know about Saray? Uh, you definitely would have traveled through there uh, on your way up from uh, from Vesic to Bara. You traveled through Saray. And my understanding is Bara outskirt, right? Like Saray is sort of like a smaller. Saray is almost a fortress. Okay. So your experience of Saray is it's very different from Bara. So that's, um, that's... it's almost more of an outpost of Vesic. Um, right. In fact, it's kind of invited some criticism from Abenlock because. Uh, Saray is built like a fortification. Yeah. Uh, it's on a very large rise. The hillside has been kind of carved away to be very steep and inaccessible. Um, and up inside it, there are multiple tiers of walls in which people travel, um, especially guards travel. And there are actually access points within the houses for guards to enter any home at any time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure I have the right picture in my head. Um, we stick with you uh, for the next leg of the journey down through Saray, but while we're in Barra, with Mara being Barra, you mind paying us? So we have a better place to spend money than some walled up fortress? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you know, at this point you've kind of gotten us through the bit that we really wanted to pay you for, so uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, is uh, 80 of now? All right. He uh, fishes around, counts out 800 gold pieces, and hands them over to you. Oh, oh, oh. Um, did we want to take a diamond in, in, as opposed to the dice? That was a bonus, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's a hundred gold And I do hope you'll be willing to stay with us a little longer. I'll, I will say. I've come to greatly appreciate your company. But uh, if you go to split off, I understand it's not really a big deal at this point. You'd already done more than enough for us. Well, I think Sarai is the plan. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what we agreed to. We're going to stick to it. And that's a hundred gold piece. I, I, well, it depends on if we're doing, are we each getting 50 and putting the rest in the party fund for uh, lodging and stuff like that? 50 or 50 or I think since we just got into town and maybe everybody wants to pick up some things, maybe you just kind of split it up. Yeah, I'll take 100 gold to spend it bar, no questions asked. I think sure. maybe you we'll just kind of restock funds. Yes, how big a party could we possibly need? <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit of 
I just tossed you a bag of a hundred gold. Have some fun. Blow money. Hmm. I, I start to and I go, do you want gems instead? Uh, well, I can use gems. You got any corn cob? Corn cob? Yeah, it's a bit useful. Not on me. Uh, but if I come across some, I'll buy it. <laughs> um, hmm. Oh, the cob's the useful bit. Um, if I find the cob, I'm definitely going to know. Ellery, you were talking about uh, you, making oh. some stools. <laughs> Maybe we go find some stuff? Yes, I would like that very much. Um, wait, uh, we should uh, do you, because you might know some people here. Well, I uh, plenty of people here. Well, do you know an orc named Daru? Uh, Sand School? Do you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, do you know that in Daru? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, 
we actually did a good bit of business with him, I think. Uh, he's a decent character. I thought so. He seemed real nice. He would really like us. Uh, yes. Okay, he really liked me. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, where, where, where's the shop? Uh, well, actually, if it's still in the same plot, the place that, that it used to be, uh, you can find him at, uh, then I'll point out a direction wherever it actually is. Is he pointing near towards the, the Lynn's Hill? It's near the Mustard Grounds, um, which, which is, uh... Mustard Grounds? Mustard Grounds. Ground? Mustard? <laughs> Stone Ground? Or... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mustard Grounds. I'm sticking with it. Shut up. Um, <laughs> We're going to the Mustard Grounds. <laughs> So you, well, so this is sort of like across town towards the southern end of Barra, um, but that would be sort of roughly where Daruk's headquarters would be. And where is that in comparison to the Windsail Tavern? Windsail Tavern is more close to the docks, so you're not far away from it now. Um, you've got probably, you could, it would be a short uh, gondola ride across, or probably about 50 minutes walk. I don't know about you guys, but I want some thrice baked shellfish. Crawfish. Is that thrice baked crawfish? Yeah. yeah. Shellfish. Pretty sure it's crawfish. Uh, thrice baked crawfish. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. The two things that we're trying to make as long as it's baked at least three times. Yeah. No, that was some good shit. We should also try to find um, the orc who's, uh, the half orc whose name I would certainly remember if I had Reba. My... Reba. Uh, Reba. Reba. Yeah. God damn, I love this guy. Yeah. Tell you what, if y'all want to take the gondola, I don't, I'm going to hook it, so to speak, and I'm going to find a weaponsmith along the way. I'll come, come with it. Weaponsmith somewhere along the way. You want to okay. come with me? Yeah. Okay. I like the gondola, but I got some shit to sell. All right. I'll go with you all since we need to pick up uh, spell scrolls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of getting some studded leather for myself as well, so I'll go and tag along. Should be an armorer nearby. All right. All right. Well, okay. Hey, we're going to look. So we've got a group going in the gondola to the Windsail Tavern. Mm -hmm. Who's going in the gondola to the Windsail Tavern? <laughs> Penny and Edlin are having. Oh, oh Penny, Edlin, and okay, perfect. All right. Well, I'm Edlin. following him around. Okay, so Penny, yeah. Edlin, and Desmond, and nobody. Yeah. Okay, good. I look at saying, nobody and be like, "You're gonna love it." It's so fun. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh boy, it's my water. I actually want to go with the gondola now. No, you know what? It's fine. I'm sure that I will hear the story afterwards. <laughs> Um, no shit, I'm going to the gun. I I can't not do it. So this let me know uh, what you need for your spell going. Um, I think I'm gonna go. Depends on like. No, uh, I'll go. I'll go on foot. I think I've probably actually honestly been to Bar at least once or twice. So Definitely. I don't know what I'm going. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So I'll go on foot to go. Yeah. All right. To you, it's like it's like coming along with somebody's first ride on the subway in New York. You're like, yeah. no, no, sure. If this is important to you, then great. But like, yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
just write letters and then we'll do the rest. Perfect. Perfect. Exactly. Give us five minutes. So we'll what do you do? Uh, <laughs> per bond. Okay. So, <laughs> per bond. Are you going to shop in with us as well? Yep. I am. Are you familiar with this town? I've been here a couple of times, so I, and I, in fact, I think I know where we have some distributors for telewine parchments, so I can at least help out in that not sponsored. Uh, I think we need to first find a, uh, a geologist or someone who specializes in stones and mm. precious metals of this kind. A geologist. Well, yeah, so I'll uh, leave it up to the GM how much I would know about this town and like where to go for shopping. But, okay, um, so I'll have you roll a history check. Okay. Uh, Kaz, I'll also have you roll a history check. Okay. Ooh, 18 plus 2, 20. Uh, 18. Okay, both of you have actually had some familiarity with this place. Kaz, looking around at this large winch win network, this is like, you can't help but be like, it's cute how, it, it's cute how impressed they all are. Yeah. Um, oh, but uh, you uh, have been through this area before, especially in your, uh, in your family's line of work. Yep. Um, and you uh, have some familiarity with the area around. Here. So, you know, without too much difficulty, you're going to be able to find most of the shops you're looking for. Same with the Oro, you've been through here on multiple occasions, uh, both with your uh, past night as well as just kind of on your own trying to find, you know, interesting characters, especially among the, uh, among the Seal Gear Call, who are, some of them sound like they're pretty adventurous, you know, uh, legendary sorts, but upon actually meeting them, you found that most of the Seal Gear are a fairly grizzled and kind of broken lot. Um, people that have kind of maybe went into it with the ideas of noble adventure and whatnot, but were swiftly, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Disabused. Disabused, yeah, of that uh, idea, you know, after yeah. enough trips into the mist coil. Makes sense. Um, Saras, you're like, you, have, you, basically know, you basically know what you've seen, like, uh, in your I've also seen it from this perspective, so mm -hmm. this is a whole other area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, well, we will start with the shopping crew. Um, so uh, you start to proceed out into the town. What are you looking for in particular? Starting with gems? Or? So we want to, I don't want to take too much time shopping because we could do this for hours. Uh, I want to sell the armor. Freak me here. Um, we got a bunch of gems that I want to offload. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to attempt to try and use the gems and stuff as barter for another diamond. Oh, Ooh. sure. Yeah. Um, we have enough gems where I feel like we can maybe do a trade straight across for credit. You know? Yeah, we've got about 500 gold worth of gems. Oh, yeah. Like, easily. Mm -hmm. The rubies, amber, and onyx. Actually, did, was somebody going to want to take any of those for... I'm going to keep one of the onyxes as a backup. I've grown kind of depth to casting through on all its stones. So. And we probably would have discussed this before reaching here. If anyone else needs any of those things, speak up now, or we'll probably just sell them off. And uh, just once again, who did anybody legitimately want to use the enlarged potion? Like, have it on hand. I know you can definitely <laughs> Can anybody, does anybody else besides Desmond want it? I think we should keep it, but I don't think we, yeah, I don't think we should sell it. I don't think we should sell it either. I just, okay. I'm trying to give people out stuff so we have, I, it's I all serious, I could find a use for, for an enlarged potion, potion, I think. Yeah. yeah. I could be an enlarged bear. No, I oh. can't be a bear yet. Wait. But soon. But soon. <laughs> also, as far as spending money, did we divvy up the 868 gold? Everybody got 100 gold, except for Desmond. Oh, Desmond 68. never takes money from me. Uh, 68 plus 20 plat, so oh. actually like... Oh, oh, that stuff? I put yeah. that in party funds. Okay, cool, got it. So I, I just, the, the payment that we just got from that guy. So if anyone had wanted more gold for shopping, we probably could have figured that out. But yeah, I can use those numbers. Cool. Okay. okay. Cool. Well, if, we're, yeah. if I'm traveling with people who are holding the party cons, then if necessary, I can lean on that. Yeah. So. Cool. And uh, just for the record, if you are looking for more diamonds, it doesn't need to be a single diamond worth 300. It just has to be diamonds worth 300. At least 300. Oh. Yep. 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 I didn't realize. Uh, and you don't realize as well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, spell. Uh, 
spell scroll making for yeah. bonds. Okay. Good. And then there's how much more to go to armor? Yeah. Get just basic stuff. You don't need like a specific item. Okay. Um, just grab some stuff. Okay. Good. So five hundred gold is what you need. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, whatever we can. Uh, so you guys uh, kind of travel around for a little bit and hit multiple different shops along the way. Um, you first make your way over to a gem shop um, where you're able to do some exchanging. What, what, what gems are you looking to exchange again? So we have three rubies, 100 apiece. We have 14 ambers, 15 apiece. One onyx, 50, and one sapphire, 100. Hmm, well, eh, I'm happy to exchange. Well, I have some diamonds in exchange for 300 gold pieces worth of diamonds. I really to accept 500 gold pieces worth of gemstones of other varieties. I love that lovely gold. I mean, I, I think that's, I think that's an okay offer, but, and beforehand I would have pressed a digitate and cleaned up all the gems. I think these gems are quite fine. Um, maybe 400 gold piece worth of gems in exchange for 300? And he kind of pulls out a, he pulls out like a little, Magnifying eyepiece there, um, whatever that thing is called. I remember it's a little loop. Yeah, and he gets down and he kind of examines them closely. Roll a persuasion check. Uh, Twenty-two. Ooh. These are quite nice. All right, I'll accept four hundred and twenty-five gold pieces worth for three hundred gold pieces of diamonds. I'm gonna give him 430 because I can't break a handful of pieces. They got 430. All right. And he accepts those diamonds, or accepts, accepts those gems and hands so them over. So the sapphire bag. and the rubies are gone, and then two embers are gone. Okay. And then and, uh, you get 300 gold pieces worth of diamonds in a small black bag. The, the bag was worth the other 15. <laughs> what was that? Uh, 300 gold worth of diamond. As soon as I see you, I'm giving them to you. you. So we're just going to skip them over. Okay. Your next stop on the way is an armor, um, and a, as well as a weaponsmith. Uh, this two is, for one. I love it. Mm-hmm. This is the. Was that one diamond or an assortment of diamonds? Uh, it's an assortment of diamonds. So one rather large one, and then two smaller ones. Okay. Cool. Um, you, uh, anything else you need? Uh, actually, I, I, I do have this onyx and 12 more amber. Uh, what would you give me for these as gold? Mm, the amber is worth 15? I have 12, yeah, the ambers are 15 a piece and the okay. onyx is 50. Okay. Uh, so I got 12 ambers left. How do you get 12? Were there... There were 15. Six. There were 15. We got six. some before. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, yeah. I don't like ambers. Ambers cool. Amber's cool. Um, yeah. I got one. We've gotten a lot of gems over the, over the weeks. 180, so it'll be 280. Mm, I would give you 180 gold pieces for all of these. How about just an even 200? <laughs> you drive a hard bargain. No. <laughs> Yeah, I gave you an extra little amount. Look, he's, kill, he's giving you like 80% of the total value. How much was it again, he said? 180. 180. Yeah, total value would have been 230 at like total equivalent price. Okay, I'll do the 180. Yeah, so it's a pretty good deal already, according to the 22 persuasion check. You know what I do. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to have a lot of way. Like, this is I know, I, I respect that about you. Now get out. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's your Yes. Uh, what can I do 
service for you today. We're, we got this fine piece of train, train mail mm -hmm. that uh, we're going to sell off. That is very fine. Actually, you might be able to use this in 
justice and preventing of crime, so we'll hang on to them actually, but oh, it's sure. nice to know we actually made them. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, hopefully they uh, hopefully they use them a little better than their previous ones. We'll do good work with them, and uh, we'll definitely Excellent. preach your craftsmanship to those who get to see them. Sure, that would be awfully appreciated. Thank you. Of course. Um, Sure. Is there uh, anything else we need from this gentleman? Well, as a matter of fact, and I'll take my uh, Warhammer off, off, sling it, and be like, I love this piece very much. But it's starting to get a little dull around the edges. It's a hammer. It's supposed to be. <laughs> I was wondering if you could make it a little more dull, a little more effective. I, I mean... I can I can adjust the weight of it. Uh, are you are you looking forward to just get a a little bit of a tune up there? Uh, what's yeah. your what's your objective here, my friend? Well, honestly, the quality of this I would rate at about a six. I would want to put plus one onto that. <laughs> now, are you trying to? Wow. Are you that's trying to? Not bad. That's a, good. More of a seven out of ten. Um, now, so yeah, I can probably help you with that. Um, I heard about something like that, Ron. Er, it's not going to be cheap, I'm not going to lie. It's honestly kind of harder to make, to, to upgrade one than it is to make a, a 7 out of 10 from scratch, you know? Um, if you're looking for a, if you're looking for a 7 out of 10 Warhammer... <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I could uh, I could give I could sell one to you for uh, let's see here I got one actually for one thousand twenty gold pieces mm. and it cost you with the original about the same price but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'll keep that in mind when I get a little more coin I'll come back and patronize your staff. The old one. <laughs> the discount. Well, well, well. Well, actually, sorry, I, I tell you what I could do. I could, um, if you wanted to buy the hammer I've got, and he reaches back and kind of like shovel and pulls out this like. <sighs> there's a freaking like gigantic like steel head on it with a with ram's horns kind of like curved back over the top of it. Um, on the front of it looks to be a small. That's been engraved into the front. It's not like standing out too much, but it looks to be a Minotaur head hammer. That is more um, and I must have it. It but, matches the buckler. Oh. Um, and then like this long sort of high wrapped handle going down to where it sort of culminates in this uh, wicked looking steel point uh, comes out. Yeah, I've had this lying around for a while. Um, so if you want to buy this one, I can um, I'll, I can take yours and uh, I can knock the value off of the price on this one. Is it well good or is it good? <laughs> All right, that sounds like a good deal. What would that knock down the price to you to this one? Uh, well, for a... Okay, I'm gonna come back for that one day 
just for sure. You, you have to understand. Well, uh, you won't find me complaining. Oh, it's on my duty. Scared to need it. <laughs> oh, I, I believe you need it. Uh, oh, we're coming back. Yeah, we, we can come back. <laughs> what's, what's the name of the shop? Um, Temper and Time. Temper and Time. Um, I think the last thing I need is some uh, making numbers. Spell components. Ah, yes, so you'll, you'll probably want a parchment shop. I know just the place. <laughs> well, I also need more than just the parchments, you know, like the, the spell components, the essences, mm -hmm. the stuff. See, so we might need to do a little more shopping around here, but yeah, yeah, of course. But, um, and then, yeah, the last thing I want to do is look at, um, yeah, to make spell scrolls uh, and enchanting his stuff, so like Ooh. components for that. And then maybe if there's like a magical item shop in general. Okay, uh, we'll get to those here in a second. Um, and we're gonna shift over to the other party. Um, you all uh, sort of split off at the docks and uh, the rest of you wait for some time before eventually a gondola crew kind of comes through. Um, and uh, uh, state your business. You looking for a gondola ride or you looking to uh, uh, transport some cargo? Gondola ride. Yes, all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, gondola ride. Uh, five, well, let's see here, uh, one gold piece per person, and, uh, well, I'm sorry, five silver pieces per person, and uh, we can, uh, yeah, that'll do. Uh, and if we're carrying cargo? Well, what, what, what kind of cargo? You can have whatever's on you. No, I mean, how much does the ride cost? Five silver pieces. Ah. Here we go. You can jump in a bucket. Uh, I will, uh, I will come oh, 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 I see what you're saying. <laughs> You, you talk, are you talking about uh, like transporting a barrel or a crate? Uh, probably. Uh, are the barrels and crates nearby? <laughs> there are barrels and crates nearby. Most of them are full of things. Okay. There are a few empty ones and or empty crates as well. Uh, just a just a crate. Uh, crates two silver pieces. Two silver pieces to carry a crate across. Five to carry us. <laughs> Let's all hop on the crate. How about your pets? I do not know if it's crazy. As long as, there, uh, as long as there's not you. Oh, see little buddy there. Or no. Just kidding. Different character. That's a different character. Sport. Um, uh, no, they're uh, included as long as they're riding. Good. I would turn into a ferret and hide hell <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I'll find the helmet. I just, yeah. I turn into a parent and find up on your shoulder. Emma is, whoop. Just touch your face. Uh, hello, little one. <laughs> what is that? Is that loud? Can he, can he just do that? <laughs> you make a rules. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't know. Hey, it's just, hey, it's fine. And I hand him two, and two gold and five silver. It's fine, trust me. Yeah, that's fine. Um, have a nice ride. Yes, Hi. thank you. Very large. It's the adventuring party haggling over five silver. Very large half orc individual grabs a whole gondola by itself and just whoop and hooks it on. Uh, get on board now. That's adorable. It starts to kind of creak along. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I'm swinging it. Those out in ferret form. Excellent. Nice. Just like the uh, whatever, like the prow ornament, like the mermaid or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I check at the front uh, of the bow as well, on the side where like the name would be on a boat, maybe, mm -hmm. and see if there's Carthage and Nelson. Um. Uh, there's a uh, goon might have carved in Nelson on a, one of these when he was very young. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Why not? Yeah, actually. Wow! Right. <laughs> that was a natural 20! I have a really good one with like a 5% chance of that happening. You know what? Screw it. We'll find out. That's dumb. I mean, seriously, like, you know, I Perfect. wish I could show you, but yes, there is an actual natural 20 there. Um, <laughs> so, um, not like I fudge rolls or something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you look down and you do see sort of a sketched in kind of uh, hastily drawn with a dagger on a, on a previous outing uh, crossbar like this. A, a very old and sort of long forgotten weathered 
uh, name. Nelson. Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis was here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, you begin your you begin your ride across Barra. Um, you can see all around you as you lift up over the various uh, buildings of Barra. It's all constructed out of wood. This kind of pale orangish wood uh, that you would know is uh, fairly st standard for the jungle trees of Mist Coil, out of which most of Barra is constructed. Um, you see all around you the various windmills rising up. Uh, as you're going along, eventually you actually pass through one windmill, sort of the sounds of Barra dampening briefly by the wood surrounding you, where you kind of creak up and then continue along, gently drifting out and turning at about a 45 degree angle and continuing along. Uh, there's a branching point at the next windmill. Um, a uh, dark elf individual standing up there says, Where are you headed? Uh, Windsail Tavern. All right. Uh, turn to crank and you redirect and head out one of the other. Uh, there's two splits here and you head towards the left split and continue along. I'm watching Nova. Um, oh yeah, I actually uh, rolled my own deck save. I'm doing okay. You doing okay? Well, shit, I should have gotten to shop. Cyrus was a lot more entertaining. <laughs> Yep. We're swinging it. He's got his sea legs. He's just digging. Yeah, all right. I know mean, that's true. We just got off the water. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it was more of a hike thing for Cyrus. Yeah. Oh, shit, you're, you're in the life. I should have I should have gone rough. Shot. <laughs> the air feels so much smoother. Oh. <laughs> it's like, you know, 50 feet up and it already feels it's better. better. Yeah. <laughs> Gently creak out over the top of the market square, uh, below which you can see many different of the bar citizens uh, kind of milling around, going to different brightly colored booths where uh, Savoyans have set up their shops or local traders have kind of are, are now very loudly uh, shouting their wares and trying to gather customers in. Um, you do get a sense of openness through here that you've been kind of missing through the narrow bar. Streets. Uh, most buildings are about two stories tall, these long, very narrow streets in between them, uh, which people kind of cluster and mill about in. But this area is open wide, and you feel kind of the, uh, the breezes coming off of the claw garden, kind of with this, this very fishy, uh, you know, low tide kind of smell to it. Breezes? Do I see an asshole walking this way? I was just going to ask you that. Perception check. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Just, just and nice this whole time, yeah. although I've only been here once, yeah. it's it's like I'm going home for the first time, so I'm like, and here's where we started swinging the boat to make SARS feel sick. Oh. And there's where that man was walking that dog. Let's and see. there's where. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to cast enhance ability upon myself. Oh my god. Oh, wow. This loop just purr 
dog dead center in his uh, right where his nose meets his forehead. <laughs>
was thinking about if I had a bit of metal that was actually kind of the same kind of tensile strength as this stuff, I could remake them into springs and create a furling device with this one to say. Yes, that is another idea. So, yeah. Oh, 
Much of made in heaven. Oh. So you make your way down the uh, windmill and, and enter out in sort of a city intersection. Do you have something? No. Okay. So you make your way out into, a, into an intersection between three streets. Um, one of them is coming off of that big town square you just left, and the other two kind of branch off into other parts of Barra. Um, but we're right on the corner here. The Windsail Tavern sits uh, as a comfortable kind of uh, a comfortable refuge for you, a familiar location in a strange city. Um, you head on inside and uh, you get yourselves comfortable. Um, you see Faustus as well at the bar, uh, the uh, tiefling barkeep, who gets you set up with some of your, with the thrice big crawfish as well as uh, some foaming mugs of Broad Lake Ale for you. Oh, uh, so mm -hmm. Water. Some water, yep. He sets you up with some water. And fish. And sweet. <laughs> yes, you want the fish and the sweets. All right, I can make that happen for you. Okay, crawfish and sweets. I just want something to put them on, like pastry or pie or something. Okay. Fish on pie? Yeah. I have fish pie. It's not the same. Okay, well then, uh, I've got some croissants and I've got some, uh, some uh, crawfish, frankly. All right, well. There you go. And he sets you up, you got a big old you know, couple of uh, fluffy, you know, the classic croissants as well as uh, some crap. Look at the crawfish. This one tastes good. Like, real good. Mm -hmm. Although there's a few legs that get stuck in your teeth. Mm -hmm. uh, today I am extra careful about food and drinks. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Um, you make sure to test everything, it all seems to come up uh, clean. Awesome. Okay. Can I get to, I'll, t I'll take some lake trip? Yes, absolutely. I've got some trout for you. Um, he goes back and comes out with a, it's a steamed, a s entire steamed trout with a dill kind of sprinkled over the top of it, as well as kind of crusted with various spices and herbs. Oh wait, actually. And it's served on a bed of, uh, of spring greens. Hmm. Uh, would you like a dagger for it? No, I would like gold for it. Well, I Which mean, is exactly what I have for I'm it. Still <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually the one paying for his stuff. I'm not there, sorry. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. All right, uh, would you like a drink as well? Uh, well, uh, I guess, ha how much does uh, does the gold give me? The one whole gold, that will keep you drinking for the rest of the night, as well as cover your food. Oh, well, whatever he gave you, I suppose. Just give me, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll take, uh, uh, I'll take, I've been running around with empty pockets for a while and um, the uh, generosity of another person is the way I get drunk. Where yeah. that is. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, like a big <laughs> pocket. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Fairly? No, it was not. 
father. Then I will have bread. Alright, I can say the bread was not that old fair either, but uh, you are more than welcome to have it. It was as le- uh, it was at least beaten. It was beaten and drowned. <laughs> yes, and, uh, yes, but and these are true. small. Well, I, I've got a pike. Hmm. That one put up a real challenge. How no? large is a pike? A pike can go up to a couple feet, I think. Yeah, they can get pretty much. 14, 14, 14 feet. feet. Yeah, they get, they get pretty big. They're like three, four, up to I think like six feet long, something like that, at a really big size. Then I will have the pike and bread. All right. He goes back and he pulls you out a large, honking uh, uh, steak, fish steak. Um, that is, it's big. Whatever fish this came from was a honking, uh, some, a honking some bait. Yes. <laughs> Nobody looks extremely pleased. All right. Yes. This butter, this I can say greatly. this butter was very vigorously acted. There you go. God, we could make an angler out of you. I'll bet you enjoy that quite a bit. Yes. With boats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, nobody here. You mind if I ask you a question? No. All right. And of course, as with everything, you never have to answer anything you don't want to. But I yes. you always drink water and wine. Is that just a taste thing, or is it like a cultural thing? Because you normally don't even like try other drinks, and I'm just curious. There is no sense in becoming senseless. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, fine. <laughs> Makes sense. Totally. The wine keeps the water pure, and the water keeps the wine from affecting you. Mmm. Got it. Okay. Cool. I'm retrieving my food. <laughs> okay. You could just drink the rest of the party. Uh, continuing along, you're going yes. to look for a magic shop and but looking for a uh, uh, parchment shop. Basically, where we need to go to get components for making spell spells. Essentially. Okay. Uh, you'd probably be able to find all of that at a magic shop. Yeah, I'm assuming. Okay. Magic shop. Um, <laughs> you go to Glint and Glimmer. Um, this is a uh, glint and glimmer. Um, you go in and meet with uh, Hildegard, the no- uh, gnomish female that uh, helps you out with any of your uh, spell, your crafting components you're looking for. Well, what can I help you with? Um, I'm looking to make a few spell scrolls, so I'm just needing uh, components to make those uh, scrolls. And I'm also always kind of looking at magical items, seeing what you have for sale, and just kind of follow that stuff. Well, of course, I've got uh, some potions, uh, useful potions of healing, potions of, uh, you've got a few potions of greater healing, and a potion of supreme healing. I have a uh, cloak of elven kind available, a, uh, a scroll of ensnaring strike. That's on, uh, that's one of our more popular items, uh, especially in this area. A scroll of expeditious retreat, also very useful in this area. And let's see here. A scroll of. <laughs> a scroll of inflict wounds, a scroll of sending, a scroll of spiritual weapon, and a sc- as well as a scroll of speaking with animals, and then basic crafting components for spells and uh, spell scrolls and magical items and whatnot. Um, what are you specifically looking for? Uh, scroll crafting ingredients. Uh, that's the major thing I need. Um, I need 500 is what I'm looking for. I need about 500 gold pieces worth of uh, materials. Um, and I'm also curious on the Speak with Animals scroll as well. Yeah, the Speak with Animals scroll isn't too expensive. Uh, this one runs. Uh, 120 gold pieces. Uh, for the 500 gold pieces of materials, you're going to be looking for parchment, as well as some uh, dust and infusements, several gems, as well as some uh, Technicolor ink uh, drawn only drawn from uh, Deep Lake uh, Strident Octopi. Um, we also are going to need to get you a little bit of uh, uh, force essence to mm-hmm. drive all of this into the parchment itself. Correct. Um, yes. Altogether, we'll come to about 500 gold pieces for you. Um, 
And uh, of course, we are using Telewine parchment for this, uh, for our usual scroll making. Oh, oh, glad to hear it. So glad to hear it. I'm, uh, my name is Leonardo Telewine, actually. So, oh, that's what my family's parchment. So, thank you so much for being a valuable customer of ours. It, it, pleasure is all mine. It's uh, very high quality stuff you have here. I can say for certain we have uh, folks from as far as Bernard who arrive here and try to purchase uh, until one parchment. So you hear. should be very proud of your family's uh, accomplishments. So um, there's a couple items I would maybe want to do for trade uh, towards this purchase. Um, I have this wand here that allows me to do a kelp whip. Um, as well as a displacer beast hide, a tentacle, and six paws from a displacer beast. Just curious if maybe you'd be interested in these items in exchange for credit towards this purchase. Well, I can give you 150 gold pieces for the displacer parts. Um, uh, for the wand... Uh, is it 150 for everything, the hide, the tentacle, and the paws? Mm -hmm. Okay, I just want to make sure. How much gold did you give me, Hillary? I can give you up to 125. And I'll kind of lean and be like, hey, I'm willing to pitch in for this too. Same here. Well, maybe I can always kind of, I, I, it'll clear me out. Don't forget to do that for the We can use like yeah. a normal scroll. Looks like there's That's a kind of more for me, to okay. be fair. Uh, no, it's not really a, a party item. The wand is worth, uh, I would give it 300 gold pieces. So with, you said how much again? It's 125. 125. Uh, 180 from that, and it was, I'm so sorry, you said 145 for all the displacer beast parts? 150. 150? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna pull out my fancy magical calculator. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I should have enough uh, with all this stuff. <laughs> I cast Abacus. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, it's Gantrop, don't worry. Uh, Abacus. Abacus. Is it 755? Beautiful. Damn. That was yeah. good. I like the Abacus. 755, Chris. Sorry, I could just do some minus. Abacus double. Don't forget about the chain, man. Ah uh, yeah, the actually the chainmail was 125 and actually or it was 180. Uh, uh, yeah, trade. we can. The chainmail is traded. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I can throw money in. We're actually fine on everything. Uh, yes. We even have quite a bit left over uh, without even having to dip into our, our gold and my gold. So yeah, we'll we'll do that deal for all these items and everything. All right. So I'm keeping my 125. Yeah, keep the 125. You get it back. Oh, wait, sorry. What? What? So 125. Uh, Hellery gave me 180 was for the armor. 300 was for the kelp whip, and 150 was for the displacer piece. Oh, okay. So without the 125, that puts us at 630, and it costs us 620. So he's getting an extra 10 gold pieces. So, there you go. So cool. Whatever makes us makes him happy. If we get what we want. All right, well, um, and she makes the exchange with you. Excellent. Well, uh, anything else I can do for you? How about you, my large friend? I'm out of my chair. And I'm going to start poking around the like share party funds. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Because I'm going to pay for it out of it for yourself. <laughs> We've got a friend we travel with, likes birds a whole lot. Uh, got anything like, um, mm -hmm. well, yeah, you too. But oh, uh, oh. looking for anything like crows or, or ravens or anything like that. If you got anything like even a little trinket or something. Oh, well, um, let's see here. She kind of like, she kind of looks around. Um, crows are, are we speaking of the, the mistress of war? Are you, think? I don't know. Never asked. Depends immensely on the aspect of her, but um, we do have a few, well, her items are fairly exclusive. Um, if you're looking for the raven crow feathers, of course, I've got just the feathers. As, uh, she does seem the fighty type. Magical mm -hmm. components and whatnot, but um, generally speaking, the items, magical items I've acquired associated with uh, the, the Morrigan. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And she kind of makes a, a small symbol that you recognize to be one of protection. Mm -hmm. um, 
they, they have a bit of an unsavory reputation frequently. Uh, not necessarily evil, but certainly not oriented towards peace and often with a bloody history behind them. Hmm. Um, I have uh, one item. It's a, it's a, I wouldn't call it a crown, more of a tiara, but tiara is a very, I'll just show you. And he, she goes behind and she pulls out uh, from behind the, uh, from behind the counter, there is this jet black, black iron sort of circlet um, with feathers that kind of like poke up and sort of wreathe around the upper side of the head, of the headpiece going around. Um, with right at the center, this deep kind of purplish blue gemstone that sits right in the center. You could swear it kind of shifts and moves um, as you look at it. <laughs> Sorry, like, you would ever want something like that. Doesn't seem. Well, I'll right. get both of you in a hole. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, just how much is something like this, just out of curiosity? So. Well, uh, this one runs 6,700 oh, oh, oh. You know, <laughs> I think Hillary will understand. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, if you got like a crow's feather or anything. <laughs> restore the revenant of a slain foe to life and oh. to battle on behalf of the slayer. Oh, um, it is a rather dangerous item that has been known to uh, cause a great deal of pain and suffering on the battlefield before uh, the revenant disperses. <laughs> seen the circle, does it remind me at all of Hellry Sword? Like, um, that is a really good question. Give me an insight check. Uh, that's a not nine plus two, so only one. It gives you a similar kind of, you know, uneasy feeling. Um, 
it's got this sort of, you can just see the history of this thing. It's got an ominous sense to it. Not necessarily of evil, but of carnage. Yeah. Um, similar to the sword pulled out of the depths of the, of the burial mound. Um, it seems to have a history behind it that is perhaps not altogether peaceful. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Well, so, yeah. real fast here. We're going to pan back to the inn, where all of you have now settled down with your food. Um, some of you are sitting outside, right? Yes. Yeah. We're looking for the man to die. Okay. Um, I'm looking to see if I can see the lemon grove from here. Lemon grove? Are you, well, you're in the middle of town, so there's no way you can see the lemon grove from here. No, you came down and are now at the, uh, um, from your, from your, you would know that the lemon grove is far off to the north side of town, which is a ways away from where your, uh, route was. Um, so you did not get to see the lemon grove this time. However, as you were all kind of settled in, um, sort of on the street here, um, you, a figure approaches, uh, from down the street and, uh, kind of reclines against the wall by the door. Um, he kind of like breathes in briefly. He's got a hood up. Um, and then exhales. He kind of turns and looks towards you and kind of like looking up into the depths of the hood, you see a brilliant white porcelain mask um, in the shape of a fox's head. And it looks down at you, and you, staring up into the into the visage, you see within the depths of the fox's eyes these two golden pinpricks of light. And he kind of looks up and down, looks at your friends, kind of like looks back towards you. Well done, man. Is how you going? Man? And that's where we're gonna pick up next time. Oh.